Throughout time, you have probably used a wide variety of computer programs. In fact, you're watching this video while running a computer program in order to access the video. But you don't usually install a whole lot of stuff, mainly just the stuff that you need. And in some cases, it feels more like the OEMs give you more stuff than what you really need. So today, we're going to be out classing the OEMs by putting 100 programs on Windows XP. Okay, I can explain this. Now, I feel like there is a lot of context as to this video. Why Windows XP? Why 100 programs? How will I do this? Etc. And so, if you don't really want to hear me talk about this and you don't need this context, then just skip to the provided timestamp on the screen right now. So, first, I feel like we need to ask the question of why am I doing this? Well, partially because I can make a video out of it, but more so because I'm genuinely curious as to what this would look like. So, I feel like before we go further, I will also establish what is a computer program. For the definition of this video and how it will fit in with this video, a computer program is something that you run on a computer that provides a interface of some sorts, whether this be through a command line, a graphical user interface, a tray system, etc., and can generally have some sort of access on the system for things such as file management, whatever. Some may be more powerful than others, and some people may make them with malicious intent. That last one is called malware, not viruses. Viruses are a kind of malware, but I feel like the term virus is oftentimes a glorified term that is used to refer to all malware. Also, on the topic of why am I doing this instead of say, oh right, I know why. It's because the fact that installing 100 pieces of malware on a computer seems like an abhorrent cliche of a video and so why would I even want to entertain the idea of doing that? Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's establish some rule sets. So, number one, every program that is installed must be installed from an installer. This is because I feel like this gives a proper bloat-esque way and to Second of all, if an installer installs multiple programs, all of those programs count. For example, if I were to say install Microsoft Office 2003, then all of the main programs in Microsoft Office 2003 would count, as well as Microsoft Picture Manager because why not? Three, all of the programs or most of the programs must be from the era respective time. This means no Supermium or MyPal. In fact, MyPal's portable, so it wouldn't count. So I feel like with these three big basic rules established. Also not to mention that pre-installed stuff does not count. Let's get into some brief history on the OS that we're going to be using. Before I get into that, Windows XP is an OS of choice because anything before Windows 2000 is really hard to work with regarding USBs and data transfer, so that would make the entire video a bit more of a logistical challenge if I were to use, say, Windows 95 or 98, but I bet I could easily do this for Windows 3.1 or 95 in a virtual machine or something. But but anything newer than XP, I feel, is too modern for something like this. So, anyway, Windows XP was released in 2001 after a couple of years of development, which started as two different projects, but was then consolidated into one project, part of a larger development plan, and it was widely popular. It was the most popular version of Windows, at least by market share, until it was dethroned by Windows 7 in the early 2010s. And so, it's not very modern by modern standards. This is like, essentially, unfortunately, as much as it pains me to say this, a relatively ancient operating system, especially since it was discontinued in 2014. So, that out of the way, one last thing before we finally get started on this, we're gonna look at the computer we're using for this. And it's a computer I haven't pulled out in a while, but I think it is going to fit the bill well for this video. This is Lenovo Think Center M58. While this isn't Windows XP recovery media for this system, I do have the drivers for Windows XP for this thing installed from Lenovo's website. I will archive them if you need them, but this thing has an Intel Core 2 Duo and enough RAM to really perform this operation. And it's also Windows Vista era PC, and so XP is generally going to be a win for this computer. And now, let's get started. Alright, so 
prediction before this actual before we actually do this i think that the startup is going to be very very fun because it's going to take a very long time to get this thing off the ground after we've got this all dealt with i think our desktop might be very bloated but especially our start menu we got so in here we've got 11.5 gigs of uh software installers there are there are a couple things we're going to need to deal with first so first this is not going to count as a program because this is a driver we need this driver in order to um install things from Disk images. I suppose we should probably get started on some of these. That's the first thing. All right, we're gonna just jump cut to when I got everything installed because I didn't really get any other footage. Let's just put it at that. So, starting Windows takes quite a bit of time, and as you can see, this is a lot of stuff that pops up on startup, such as instant messenger clients, an error from a vast antivirus saying that we can't use its real-time stuff because of another antivirus, and this balloon thing, which is actually a program. Remember my rule set that I mentioned earlier? Microsoft Time Zone fits that, I guess. But overall, this took, I'd say, at least five minutes to get off the ground. We also do not have easy-to-access USB. We've got to log out because Adobe Photoshop album Th whatever this thing is that I had on a USB drive was not very uh, decided that it was going to hoard the USB connection. Of course, Adobe has always had just that kind of software design. And so, next up, I want to see how long an antivirus scan is going to take. We're going to use a Vira antivir for this, which I haven't used before and I haven't really made a video on, but I don't really have a lot of interest in making a video on it because obvious reasons. And just for some context, this this antivirus scan took quite a long time. It took 50 minutes. In case you are curious, I've made quite a few videos on antiviruses on this channel in the past, and the scans in those videos have never taken this long to perform, surprisingly. As for the performance of different programs, Microsoft Word 2003 took a bit of time to load than expected. However, once it was going, performance wasn't really hindered. It shouldn't be too surprising that the load times are a bit slow but the overall performance of the programs is mostly unchanged. Macromedia Flash MX 2004 was a similar story, not taking a whole lot of time to load, and this is nowhere near the worst times that I've seen for loading, such as in my Macromedia Flash MX 2004 demo video from a couple years ago. As for other programs, things like Paint.net, SketchUp, Apple Safari, and ACDC all pretty much are AO Okay. They load instantaneously, just like any normal application would, so surprisingly, it seems to be running quite well for having 100 programs on it, and in fact, I actually lied, there's more than 100 programs, there's 106 programs, at least as far as I counted. So, will our 106 programs really affect gaming performance all that much? Not really. Halo seems to be running A-OK, -okay, even though it gave me a warning at the start relating to not being being able to find the video thing because we've got Windows Vista era integrated graphics, but it runs fine as you can see. Next up, there's Bejeweled 2, which also, like Halo, is running quite well for this system. I'm not very surprised by this because while it is a fairly mediocre Windows Vista and 7 PC, it's quite a superb Windows XP system. It was handling this game, like, really well. Next up on the block, Toho 7, which played perfectly fine, even though I'm a bit rusty at it at the moment. And the only issue here was I did notice that the frame rate was, like, fidgeting between its intended 60 FPS and, like, 59 FPS. I know that sometimes Toho games can be a bit, a bit finicky with different graphics devices. However, this game runs just fine in my Windows 7 recovery media video on this computer, so I don't know. And last of all, Peggle. Not really a Windows XP era game as it is a Windows Vista game. It runs fairly well as well, so overall, it's 
fairly okay for the most part. And the only other thing is that while shutting down, it has an error, and if you don't hit the okay button or something, then you essentially have an error sound embedded in the Windows shutdown sound to some extent. So overall, what did we learn? Surprisingly, apart from loading times, having 100 programs installed on a Windows XP system does not affect its performance all that much. Would I recommend doing this? Absolutely not! I say don't do it because seriously don't do it. Why would you want to waste your time like me? But I feel like this is going to not stick around for a whole lot longer for obvious reasons. So that's about it, I guess.